Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Vintage Story. Hope you guys are doing good today. I am doing awesome. I have been doing a bunch of work on the house here, and I think I've come up with what I want to be doing here on this side. So part of it is to push over here closer to the path that runs alongside the garden. And that is probably going to mean that this portion of water is going to get filled in at least partially. Because, yeah, that, well, for starters, we have just this little tiny narrow isthmus of land connecting these two, and it's rather annoying anyway. But, uh, yeah, I did go ahead and change this to half slabs up above, and I've been slowly working on getting some of the stuff done here but unfortunately you can see I have 12 of the diagonal logs plaster and four of the square logs plaster and uh, so yeah I am running out of that stuff big time and so what I need is what's going on over here you know I am making more of this quick line so yes it, lots and lots of peat is being used you can see we're already down to just one pile of peat left so i'm probably going to have to go out and do a bunch more peat mining as well but now i have also been looking at some things that we can do for the roof on this and so in the last episode we talked about uh, the issue of stairs not connecting so you know yes that is very definitely a thing so we're accustomed to stairs connecting and making an l-shaped stair there from minecraft but vintage story doesn't do that so what we need to do instead is something like this so rather than uh, using the stair blocks to connect around the corner we will need to place full blocks in the corner to actually connect that and it's not a terrible look but it it you know it's not as clean as the l-shaped stair but it does work so that is what we're going to be doing now i guess one thing that i didn't think about let's take a look at this real quick so i had tried putting a different block into these um what could we use something that i have okay yeah that'll work because i have pine half slabs on me as well so we will just assume that these were something else but so if we put these pine slabs in here that doesn't really look very good but if we put another half slab on top of that now that really doesn't look good either <laughs> so yeah we'll just stick with having a solid block in the corner and um, yeah it sounds kind of like I am going to need to retreat inside and I actually have something to be doing while I am waiting for the night to pass so the other fire over here now that we've got all that picked up the other fire over here is firing shingles so with a few of these shingles we can actually make a block so it takes three of these shingles to make a stair block and four of them to make a solid block and so if we come up here and i have some food here sitting on the table apparently the game sees this as a cellar and so it has given a lot of excess life to those uh food pots that's fine i i will gladly take that but so if we take and go here we can get 12 shingles per recipe here and then what we need to do is just remove this little bit here in the center 
and then make the 12 shingles again. And yeah, I will be doing this through the night. And hopefully I'll be able to start putting down the shingles. Now I did find out the colored shingles. There are two of them. There are red ones and there are uh, brown ones. Those two are a creative mode thing only. So we can get blue shingles and we can get fire shingles. And I mean, that's all we have available. Obviously, I'm going to be using the blue shingles because we have a lot of blue clay available. And uh, once we get all of our clay used up, then we can just very easily go out and get some more because it is all over the place. But I will be working on the shingles through the night and try not to screw up the forming. And I will see you guys in the morning. So I have been doing some work here, trying to get the roof line figured out on this house. And I think I have finally kind of gotten it figured out. Part of it was making this section five blocks wide instead of only three or seven as it was when I had originally thought it out. So yeah, that helps a little, but I have quite a few of the shingles made here. I've also made a few of the shingle stairs already, and the great majority of the roof is going to be the stairs. So yes, that is what we've got going on there. Now one thing that we need to do here is to put some upside down oak stairs underneath this, and that's going to help the appearance by quite a bit. And then we will go ahead and place these in here. And yes, this is going to be a fairly standard roof setup. I'm going to leave that one open so that I can get back up here. And now at this point, things are going to start to get a little bit strange. So actually, I think I've got this wrong. So let's go ahead and remove this guy and this one. And we're going to start the roof line for the next section section of the roof, which is over here. And yes, I am going to be half covering these windows, which kind of stinks, but at the same time, it makes this look a lot better. Otherwise, this thing just looks way too big. So yes, just like over there, I am going to put this up here. Now I had originally contemplated putting a roof like I have been making in the Unbound Realm on these, but because of how difficult it is to get supplies and also how wide this thing is, I realized that was a bit prohibitive. So yes, these logs need to go back away because our roof is not going to be that high. So now I need to make a few regular blocks and I guess we will need these and then I might as well make a few more shingles as well. And so we're going to put a full block here and then we're going to start putting the stairs here. Now I could have done this a number of ways. I just decided this kind of looked the best. And so that's what I'm going to end up doing. But then I'll go ahead and put a solid block there. So this one would get a stair. I'm not going to put it in there right now. So then this one is also going to get a solid block and then a stair. Skip that block so that I can get up into here and then again up. Then here we're going to place some logs across this thing. So one, two, three, and I think that might actually be it. Just those three, because this block, I believe, needs to go away now, too. And then again, more of these here. 
you know what, we're just going to go ahead and do this. It'll make it a lot easier to see what is going on here in just a little bit. So then this is just going to be kind of repeated along here. And this portion is going to go a little bit higher. So that is pretty much full height for the shingle blocks there. And also I found out that uh, holding shift here doesn't necessarily keep you from walking off of these because I've already fallen off once. So be very careful with that. But uh, I'll go ahead and just put a couple more of these in here and then we'll go down and take a look at this. Of course, roofs are one of those things that kind of it can make or break a build. So a roof is kind of an important detail. You know, all of these other details are very important, but without a decent roof, the, the building just doesn't feel right. So uh, can we get back away from here? So we can see this portion of the roof is going to be quite a bit higher. This one's going to be lower and uh, it won't be as wide either. Now, I have thought about the fact that this cobblestone border on here looks exceptionally heavy, but really, I mean, clay tiles, yeah, they're pretty heavy as well. So, yeah, I know. It, it may not quite feel right. I do have, uh, well, at least on this one, we have the logs that are sticking out and then there's the planks coming up underneath the roof. So hopefully that'll help a little, but I need to put a little bit of the plaster blocks up in these little corners up here, extend the logs up and I'll push the roof down this side as well and uh, come back in a little bit and we'll see how this looks. Well, it's times like this that I wish I would have set up in a slightly greener biome. You know, looking at this, it's kind of brown. Yeah, and I could have just gone right over there. You know, that, that's not all that far away. That would have been nice and green. But it's not a very large green area either. So, yeah, yeah whatever. But yes, this roof is looking very nice. We will be adding some chimneys later on once I figure out where I'm gonna be putting the kitchen and things like that. But it's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and get back down here and take a look at it from the ground. So the reason I went up in the air is you can't really see it from down here. I mean, you can kind of, but not really. So yes, it is looking pretty good. Let's get around the side here. Now also we have some torch holders in there that I've pulled out of various places. And actually further away from it, you can actually see it a lot better. That is nice. So let's come clear down here. Oh yes, that looks very nice. So we'll definitely have to be finishing out the back of this because I have not done anything with the walls around the back side of it or the roof around the back side for that matter. So if we go through here, which eventually we should be able to get rid of those gates, but we can see the back side here is all open and it's going to take a little bit of work to get this done. So I want to bring this wall back into here and then I'm going to add a little bit more this way. So that means this little area is going to have to be filled in. Now, as you can see, I did fill in this. All the water is gone, but I ran out of dirt. I even ran out of muddy gravel. So I had to stop. This is all going to get filled into this level eventually. And that will allow us to put in more of our farms because I intend now to bring this path along here and then we should be able to run off of the side of it in both directions because I kind of want this to be the area for agriculture. And where we're going to be putting the livestock, I am not sure. Eventually we will definitely get that figured out. But yes, it is looking really good. And uh, I have been spending a lot of time on this. So I think I'm going to check and see how the length of the episode is doing because I have no idea where we're at for time. And, oh, that looks amazing with the, 
the sky illuminated behind from the sunset. But uh, yeah, we'll see where we're at and I'll decide what we're going to do from there. So we still have a fair amount of time left, but I have to say I'm getting a little bit burnt out on this because I have been working on it for quite some time between gathering resources and everything else. But uh, one thing that I am seeing that is going to be a very large problem for us is lighting. So we do have these torch holders, which is great, but we really need to be able to get some other lighting sources. And yeah, I, I don't know if I like that, but that is something. But uh, so one thing that we do have, if we look in our handbook, we have uh, lanterns, if I can spell it right. So we have lanterns and we can make even a copper lantern and this needs some glass slabs or some clear quartz. It doesn't really matter. So, I mean, we'll probably just use our clear quartz for that. We need a copper plate, which can be made on our anvil, but then we need some candles and these candles we get from beeswax. So the way that we will be able to get beeswax is we have to actually get some bees. So for that, we need to make a skep. So the empty skep takes two clay and 16 cattails. So yes, we have a lot of cattails to, well, I guess we actually have a lot of cattails when I think about it. So if we get in here, yeah, that'll be enough to make four skeps and we actually have enough to make three more if we need to. So let's go ahead and make up a bunch of skeps here. And then we're gonna head out and put these down near some beehives. So we have a little bit of clay left and I'm gonna grab a bowl of food before I go because yeah, food is kind of important and this one is yeah, just about empty. So let's go ahead and remove those from our hot bar, control click to pick these up and let's head out. So out in the area where I have been getting my peat, which by the way, I have big huge piles of peat again because I went out and got a whole bunch more. But out where I've been getting my peat, there are a whole bunch of beehives. So that seems like the sensible place to go because I already go out to this area a lot for a lot of things. So, oh, hi there, Mr. Pig. So I actually had tons of wolves try to attack me here earlier. And I would imagine all, nope, nope, they have not despawned yet. So there's one there, there's one here. Uh, and then there should be three of them over here. Yes, so there's one, two, three. So these three all tried to hit me at once. I just went down under the water here and hit them underneath. And uh, yeah, they, they stay up on the surface of the water. And so they couldn't hit me. It was, it was so simple. It was ludicrous. But over here somewhere, we have some beehives. So we just kind of have to listen for them. And we'll place these skeps down near the beehives. So given a little bit of time, they will pick up the bees that are in the hive and populate the skep. And so that is the first step to beekeeping. So let's head up here and see if we can just listen for some bees. And then what I'll probably do while I'm waiting for these skeps to populate is go ahead and do some pro picking in the area. See if I can find a place where we can find something that will be useful for us in materials. Okay, I can hear one somewhere. So, sounds like it's coming from this direction. It's getting louder. Oh, there it is. All right, so we want this skep to be reasonably close to them but I don't think that we can put it up against the leaf block. Hey, we can. <laughs> okay. So it shows it as an empty skep right now. And that is 
a large hive, but it has a poor population. We have no flowers nearby. So I'm probably going to want to gather up some flowers and get them around here too. Maybe get some dirt up next to the hive as well. Now there's plenty of beehives around here. So not really all that big of a deal, but it really doesn't look like there's any flowers around here. So I may have to go and find some flowers. I know that, oh, there, I just saw some. So over here, oh, no, that's not flowers. This is where I got the peat from. Uh, darn it, that looked like the, the heather flowers. Well, I gotta find some flowers, and I'll put those by that hive. I'll try to find a couple more hives. Okay, so here's some flowers. Okay, I hear another beehive. So we need quite a few flowers Ooh, cat mint. Nice. But we need quite a few flowers around each beehive. And we're going to want to have as many as we can. You know, as many hives as we can around here. So I'm going to get all of that taken care of. And like I said, do some mining. And I'll see how things go. So I have managed to find two hives so far. Put a lot of flowers around them. And then I started looking for more hives, but I decided I needed more flowers. And I got over here and I remembered something that I read. And that is, if you see mushrooms, the biome is too wet for bees. You know, they will not spawn naturally. And I have been seeing tons of mushrooms over here. So yes, we are not going to be finding bees over in this direction. But we will find them over here. So this is the second hive here. Went ahead and set up my dirt platform. And as we can see, we now have a large population in this hive. And it says it's going to swarm in approximately two days, which means at that point our skep should get some bees in it. But yes, it is getting dark and I need to sleep and I don't have my bed on me. So I had better head back to my base and sleep. I also need to get uh, some more food and some tools and hey I have a, a fire pit out here. Yeah. Hmm. I would not have guessed that that was here but this one here should be swarming in two days as well. So yeah we'll give it a couple of days see how things go with the bees and uh, then I'll be back. So while I've been waiting for the bees to do their thing, I started doing some pro picking around this area. And I have to say this area really sucks for ores. There doesn't really seem to be much. But I decided I would go ahead and dig down anyway. And I'm really glad that I did because I just found a tin vein, a tin ore vein. So I was just kind of looking around here to see if there's anything else of interest around here. I seriously doubt that we're going to find anything. Looks like we got a little bit of chert and, oh, kimberlite. Um, yeah, kimberlite's diamond. Uh, do we have a chance of finding some diamonds around here then? Uh, what do we got up here? Let's go ahead and place a little bit of dirt. Okay, so that was nothing. It just lighting, lighting issues. So yeah, I found a little bit of tin. But the bees have already swarmed on the skeps. And I am just waiting for them to get a little bit larger population. And then we'll go ahead and bring them back to our base. But yeah, I want to do a bit more exploring here in these caves and see if I can find anything. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. So uh, this is something that's kind of important, saltpeter. So, uh, yeah, that will uh, allow us to make the blasting powder later. But it doesn't really look like there's probably going to be too much more in here. There isn't really much in this area. But uh, Cassiterite is one of the things that it does say that can be found around here. So, 
Yeah, that kind of makes me happy that I found one because the chance is very low. And Kernite, what in the heck is that? So this is another thing that it's been saying is available around here. And I have no idea what this stuff is. So uh, can we shift H? Okay, so it gives us this. Um, I don't know that there's anything to do with that stuff. If you guys know of something... Oh! Oh, oh! Oh! Well. Um, yeah. Quirky Tavern. Some lime. Nice. A whole bunch of other goodies. More lime. Nice. All right. I'll go ahead and grab this stuff. I'm, I'm definitely not going to complain about that. My axe is just about dead. So... Not a whole heck of a lot that uh, I'm going to be able to do with this. But, yeah, I'm going to explore around here a little bit more. I'm going to go grab the beehives. Oh, God. These are some of the new drifters. So we have the Tainted Drifter, and we have a Nightmare Drifter over here, too. That's that really dark one there. Yeah. Uh, Nope, nope, I, I, nope, I'm not going any further right now. We need to get some armor before we mess around with that. Oh, God. So this is one of the deep drifters. And now I have actually gotten out of the deep drifter. Oh, wow. Okay. A corrupt drifter that's dead. He must have fallen down or something. I don't, I don't know why he's dead. But, uh, yeah, what was I saying? I, I don't remember. But, yeah, I'm going to get back up here if I can. And I, I'm not going any further down here until I get some armor. Well, I am back at the base now. And I have to say, there's a lot of bees around here. So I have brought back two skeps that have bees in them. And as these decide to get large, which they are, uh, they will spread to some of these other skeps that I have placed in the area. So, yes, we have tons and tons of room for bees here. And I will probably just be putting hives or skeps all over this area because, yeah, we, we've got tons and tons of flowers. If we look at the, if we look at the map here, we've got this massive number of flowers here and then another big group of them over here and it only makes sense to uh, take advantage of those areas of flowers and so this area is going to become our beekeeping area probably do a little bit of work to kind of smooth it down just a little you know areas like this that just it, it's jutting up and it doesn't make a lot of sense same with things like this here and I might plant a tree or two around here, and then I'm also going to fill in these swampy areas. But I think we're getting close enough to time on this episode that I'm going to call it good. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I've been working on or anything that you would like to see, be sure to leave that down in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye! Ah, look at all those bees. So many bees.